everybody, Heather here, and I thought I'd show you how I prep my shells today. What is prep? Prep is just taking a fossil out of its matrix and trying to make it look like whatever it was that was alive. Today I have a fossil shell from the Virginia Miocene. This is probably going to be Chesapeake nephrins. That's the most common scalp out there. And uh, you can see it's pretty good sized. You can see there's the hinge right there. And you can see the scalloped edges on the back. And you can see the ribs on this side. And it's already cleaning itself off because the sand that has dried off, I kept it in aluminum foil and the sand has dried out. And now it's just kind of flaking off here. But the darker stuff is gonna stay on. So I have to play around with it. All right, so I'm looking at this, and if you take a good close look, this has actually got a big on crack on it. So I'm going to be really, really careful with this to make sure it doesn't completely fall apart when I take it out. And right now what's holding it together is actually all the mud on the bottom. So as I get through this, I'm going to have to glue it to make sure that it stays in one piece. For now, I am going to pull out my handy dandy tools, and these are the tools of the trade here. So I've got screwdrivers. These are usually for prying things out of the matrix. When I'm at the beach, I'll just take a big chunk like this and just pop it out and then bring it home. I've got, this is a little clay tool here. It's for carving clay. I use this for pottery and change to different tactics. And then I have dentist tools. These things wear out all the time. So my dentist was kind enough to give me a whole fistful of his retired denti uh, dental tools so I can use these for picking uh, shells and you know, don't worry, I have to invest in anything. And then I have brushes because most of the stuff is pretty soft and I can just get away with brushing it without actually messing up the shell. So I think we're going to start with a toothbrush. See, it's all coming off pretty well there. Yes, I screwed up my hand and it's been days since I could actually use any fingers at all. So I'm really happy that I can get this much done with the hand that I've got because I've just been aching since I hurt my hand to come and play with this stuff because I can't go out collecting. All right. I'll be back when I've gotten most of the loose stuff off. All right, so this is what it looks like now that I've brushed off most of that loose stuff with the toothbrush. And as you can see, this is actually not one shell, it's two. So here is the hinge of the top shell. And you turn around here and you can see that it's kind of going over top of the second shell down here, and they look like they're both facing the same direction. So I'm a little disappointed that if there are two shells stuck together like this that are about the same size that they are not a matched set, but hey, some days go like that, right? Oh, I'm gonna flip this over here very carefully with my lack of a thumb. And there's the other side of it, you can see there's still a lot of debris in here, a lot of broken bits of shell material, and there might actually be something interesting inside this lump that I can't see yet, so I'm gonna to have to be very careful when I pry it out. And this is what I'm going to use for the next step. Is, da -da -da, oops. This is an electric calculus remover. It's a little battery powered thing. Let's press the button here. 
of vibrates a little, just a little bit, kind of like an electric toothbrush. And then just come down here and very gently wiggle off the loose stuff. And it doesn't require any hand strength or thumbs if I'm careful about this. So here we are making some progress. You can definitely see the two shells in there. I still have a whole lot in the middle that I need to carve out. I'm going to try to pry that loose, but it's not quite ready to pry yet. In the meantime, I've got this big old crack right here. So I'm going to try putting some glue in here. I think my glue may actually be a little bit too stiff. It's been sitting on the shelf for a little bit. I'm going to give it a try, and this is what I'm going to use. This is called, this is Paleo Bonds Structural Adhesive. It's for, specifically for gluing boss gels together. And it's completely reversible. So if I goof this up with my bad hand and my left hand, then I can always redo it. All right, so that actually worked out pretty well. Got the glue in there. It's got a little bit of dirt in there, but it's not too bad. And then it's going to be dry in just a couple of minutes. And I can go back to scraping again. All right, so I'm gotten most of the way through cleaning up the bottom here. But as you can see, there's a crack that's going all the way through this. And I showed you on the other side that there was a crack on the on this side too. So by themselves, these are not going to stay together. What we're going to have to do is get put some glue between the shells. I don't know if I can get this or not. Not really. There's this gap in there, and there's a lot of sand down in the back that I haven't scraped out yet. So what I'm going to do is glue through the crack here to solidify the sand between the shells and fuse them together. But I have to clean this out first, and we've gotten to a point here where the sand is not so loosely packed anymore. It's actually, you can't really see very well in the video, I don't think, but oh, you can see a little bit of glitter in there. There's actually crystallized calcium in the dirt. So this is a lot harder stuff and I'm probably going to have to pull out the Dremel tool to get this cleaned up. Just enough to get the glue in there without actually gluing all the brown stuff to the shell. Alright, it's only taken me a couple hours to get to this point. I'm impressed. You can see there are a lot of cracks in here. It's not cleaned up completely, but I think we're at a point now where I just want to glue it and let it sit and then come back to it when I'm not worried about having it fall apart in my hands. So what I have to take care of that is this lovely stuff here called Paleo Bond. There are actually a lot of different things you can use to stabilize fossil shells, um, including plain old Elmer's glue if you're not overly worried about this being something of a museum piece. And honestly, we use Elmer's glue at the museum occasionally. But we've got Paleo Bond is designed specifically for putting together stabilizing fossils. It is incredibly noxious stuff. It makes crazy glue look like some kind of kid's glue stick. It's just that strong and it will glue everything together. Fortunately, it does peel off the fingers, but you really don't want to get it on your fingers because it kind of burns. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it also eats through nitrile gloves. So it's something that you have to use with caution. But if you want to do a good job and make sure that they stay together, I recommend this or something called Paraloid, which is not quite as noxious, but requires whatever you use be completely 100% absolutely dry and I suspect this isn't because there's probably still some moisture in the sand between the layers here. So I'm going to use this to glue this together. 
I just spent the last 45 minutes working on this with the electric calculus remover and I'm really surprised that this came as clean as it did with that tool. This was a lot easier than doing the bottom. But you can see there's a big crack all the way across there. But what's interesting is what I found underneath all that dirt there is a hole right here that is from a hungry egg forest snail which is looked something like that this is a rather large one this would have drilled a very large hole that's something I prepped the other day and over here is barnacle attachment that was on the shell and there again I'm really happy that I managed to keep that on there the shell is really really soft and flaky and if I wasn't really gentle with this I'd have scraped that pattern right off and all these little black marks in here are more bore holes I suspect those are probably from a sponge. They're not perfectly circular like the Acphora. Those are probably from a sponge that attached itself to the top of the shell here. It looks like there's probably all, all around in here underneath this dirt. I'm probably going to find a lot more. Come on, focus. There we go. Focus. Yes. So I'm going to have to attack this with the Dremel tool next. But it's definitely, definitely coming along. at all. I just totally decimated that little piece of shell that was sitting on top in the mud there. This will definitely do some heavy damage if I'm not careful. Look at that. We have shells. Very nice Chesapecta nephrons there. I can tell. It's going to be kind of hard to see because of the video camera. But you can see the details and there's enough sculpture in the shell here even though it's been really heavily deteriorated to identify it down to a species. This is an index fossil for the chop tank formation which means that if you find this shell in here it's from a very specific time period. So this is a handy shell to find. I'm going to take a damp rag here and I'm going to wipe it down to get the dust off so that we can stabilize this very gently. Hey, last step. Now we're just going to go through and saturate this with Paleo Bond. This is probably going to be a two-handed project. This is definitely going to be a two-handed project. See, I'm just doing just a little bit at a time and letting it soak in. And it will permeate the whole shell. It'll still be fragile when I'm done. But it won't be as likely to disintegrate. So as long as I'm careful with this. It should last a good long time. The thing lasted for 15 million years. So, you know, we ought to last a few more years out of the matrix, right? 
Otherwise, what's the point of the effort? I'll be back when this is dry. Ta-da! There it is. Clean up as it's gonna get.